In our last video, we balanced redox reaction in acidic reactions or acidic mediums. Now we're going to balance redox reactions by oxidation numbers in a basic mediums. Again, this will be a solution containing hydroxide. After that, we will talk about disproportionation as well. Our example here is the uh, reaction of permanganate with sulfite to perform or to react to yield sulfate and MnO2 in the basic solution, we're told. Step one is similar to our balancing in acidic conditions where we have to assign oxidation numbers and then identify what atoms or ions where the oxidation numbers change. So here quickly we can uh, assign oxidation numbers based on our oxidation number rules and we notice that the oxidation number for manganese, manganese has gone from plus seven to plus four and the uh, oxidation number for sulfur has gone from plus four to plus six. So then for step two, we now determine the number of electrons transfer per atom. Since the oxidation number went from plus seven to plus four, we know that for each atom of manganese, it gained three electrons. And whereas for sulfur, it went from positive four to positive six, so that we know per atom of sulfur, it lost two electrons. Our next step is to determine number of electron transfer per molecule. Because there's only one atom of manganese in permanganate, there is three electrons transferred per permanganate ion. And because, again, because there's only one sulfur per sulfite molecule, there is only two electrons transferred per sulfite molecule. As we said in our previous step, we know that manganese or per manganese is gaining electrons, so it's being reduced. On the other hand, sulfur going from plus four to plus six, its oxidation number is increasing, it is being oxidized. Our next step is to determine the lowest common multiple between uh, three and two. And the lowest common multiple between that is six. That means in this reaction, there will be six electrons transferred in total. And to get six electrons per, for, from permanganate, we need two molecules of permanganate. So the coefficient in front of permanganate is two. Similarly, to get six electrons to be uh, given up by sulfite, we need to have three molecules of sulfite. Therefore, the coefficient in front of sulfite is three. To balance out the product side, we need to have three sulfate and two MnO2. Now that we have our um, redox atoms balanced, we can now balance using oxygen in our next step. Just like when we balance in acidic conditions, we can balance oxygens by adding water, and then we're going to balance hydrogens by adding uh, H pluses. So to make everything balanced, we will need to add one water to our product side of the equation and two hydroniums or two H pluses to the reactant side of the equation. We can quickly double check our results. Here we have eight atoms of oxygen. Here we have nine. Eight plus nine is 17. And then here we have three times four is 12. And then two times two is four. And then we have one uh, atom of oxygen in water. And everything on the right hand side also balances to 17. Let's count hydrogens now. We have two hydrogens here. No hydrogens in permanganate, no hydrogens in sulfate, and we have two hydrogens in, in water. So again, our hydrogens are balanced as well. Now, if we're balancing in acidic conditions, we'll be done because we have uh, a presence of hydrogen ions. However, we were told that this was balanced in a hydroxide environment, a basic environment. Therefore, we need to add hydroxides to both sides in order to cancel out any excess hydrogen ions, and we'll do that next. So now, because this is in a basic solution, we need to have a lot of hydroxide present and no hydrogen ions present. The way we get rid of hydrogen ions is to add hydroxides to both sides in equal number to the number of hydrogen ions present. We noted that there were two hydrogen ions on the left-hand side 
Therefore, to balance it out, to neutralize it out, we need to add two hydroxides to the left-hand side. However, what we add to the left-hand side, our hydroxide, we need to add to our right-hand side as well. At this point, we can count the number of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen on both sides and realize that they are still equal to each other. The last step we need to do is to simplify our reactions and cancel out any waters that are present on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We notice that we have two hydrogen and two hydroxide on the reactant side. Well, hydrogen and hydroxide combine to form water, in this case, two waters. Because we have two waters on the reactant side and one water on the product side, one of these waters can actually cancel out. So that at the end of the day, you only have one water on the left-hand side. So our final balance equation is 2 MnO4 minus plus 3 SO3 2 minus plus 1 water to yield 3 SO4 2 minus plus 2 MnO2 plus 2 hydroxide. If you're to count the number of atoms on both sides, you find that they are equal. And to, we also need to double check our charges. Here on the uh, reactant side, we have a net charge of negative 2 and 6 negative or 8 negatives. On the product side, we have 3 times 2 negative is negative uh, 6 and 2 hydroxides is negative 2. Again, the total charge on the right is negative 8, also equal to uh, our left-hand side. Next, we'll talk about the phenomena of disproportionation. This is when a single substance reacts with itself to produce two different substances. Now, this is not a single molecule reacting to give two different substances, but one molecule of one chemical reacting with another molecule of the same chemical to give you two different chemicals. Now, this is a type of reaction, a redox reaction, where one chemical is both oxidized and reduced. Now, to solve such a problem, we're going to write two identical molecules on the reactant side, and then they will solve using our regular balancing procedures. So let's look at an example of a disproportionation reaction. Here we have household bleach, which contains sodium hypochlorite. Some of these ions disproportionate into chloride ions and chlorate ions. So we know we have Cl- or hypochlorite. It reacts to give you chloride ions and chlorate ions. Now remember our hint is that to we write two molecules of the reactant on our reactant side. So we have ClO and ClO. Again, our very first step is to assign oxidation numbers. The oxidation number for chlorine here on the reactant side is plus one. On our product side, however, chloride, the chlorine in chloride has oxidation of minus one, and the chloride in chlorate ion has an oxidation number of positive five. Our next steps are similar to the ones that we've done before. So let's see, we have, let's say, uh, this left hypochlorite, it went from plus one to minus one, it gained two electrons per chlorine atom, but there's only one chlorine atom per hypochlorite, so we know per hypochlorite it gained two electrons. Here, uh, this other hypochlorite, we went from plus one to plus five, it lost four electrons per chlorine atom, and again, because there's only one chlorine atom per hypochlorite, we know there's in reaction, there's four electrons lost per hypochlorite. The lowest common multiple between two and four is four. So that we now know we need to put a coefficient of two in front of our first hypochlorite in order to uh, lose or gain, sorry, four electrons in total. And our coefficient here is the invisible one because we only need one of those hypochlorite solution to gain, to lose four electrons. Now that we determine the coefficient on our product side, on the reactant side, sorry, 
this was 2, we also need to put in a 2 here because that's our corresponding chlorine atom. And here on the reactant side, this hypochlorite has 1, so then this chlorate ion only has 1 as well. Now, if you're asking, well, does it really matter if we designate the left one to, uh, to be our reduction one or our right one to be our oxidation one? No, no, it doesn't. You could easily have uh, your left one being the one being reduced and your right one being uh, oxidized. In this case, the coefficient, instead of being 2 and 1, will be 1 and 2. Now that we have the chlorine or atoms uh, balance, let's look at the oxygens. On the left hand side, we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus another oxygen is a total of 3 oxygens on the left hand side. Uh, there's no oxygens here, and there's 3 oxygen atoms on the product side as well. So the number of oxygen is balanced, and there's no hydrogens here as well, so we don't have to balance that. And let's look at the net charges. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus a negative 1. Our net charge on the left is minus 3. And now let's look at the net charge on the right. 2 times negative 1 and 1 times negative 1. It's also minus 3. So the charges as well as our atoms are balanced. So now we're done. Let's try another example of disproportionation. Here we have chlorine disproportionating in a base. So we need to balance using OH- into Cl- chloride and ClO4- perchlorate. So our basic reaction is Cl2 yields ClO4- and Cl-. Notice here we already have two atoms of chlorine here in Cl2, so we don't need to actually write another molecule of Cl2. However, if we don't like writing Cl or don't like having Cl2 like this, we can write Cl-Cl. Now it's easier to see that we have two atoms of chlorine, one on the top, let's say, and one on the bottom. Well, let's identify which chlorine atom is uh, gaining electron and which chlorine atom is gaining uh, or losing electrons. The oxidation number for neutral chlorine is, is zero, so zero and zero. Here in uh, perchlorate, ClO4, the oxidation number for chlorine is plus seven. And in chloride, the oxidation number for chlorine is minus one. So for example, let's say uh, the top uh, chloride chlorine atom is uh, going to gain one electron and the bottom uh, chlorine, uh, chlorine atom is going to lose seven electrons. So if one uh, chlorine atom is going to gain one electron and another is going to lose seven electrons, the lowest common multiple between one and seven will be uh, seven. So in our reaction, when we're balancing, we have to have eight electrons, sorry, seven electrons that are totally uh, moving around. Now from our last slide, we know that our reductions is going to, our reduction reaction is going to gain seven electrons. However, we know that for each chlorine atom, here, if it goes oxidation number zero to minus one, each atom is only can able to gain uh, one electron. Therefore, to gain a total of 70 electrons, our coefficient here must be 7. And for our oxidation, we went from an oxidation number of 0 to positive 7. So we're going to lose 70 electrons. And the way we can lose 70 electrons is only we need only one of those coin atoms to lose 70 electrons. Now let's look at the number of coin atoms on the product side. We have here 1 and 7 to make 8. How are we going to get 8 atoms of chlorine on our uh, reactant side? Well, we're going to need 4 pairs of Cl2. Each Cl2 having 2 chlorine atoms and having 4 pairs, we're going to have 8 chlorine atoms on our reactant side. So we've covered this point. need 8 Cl's on the left and on the right. The next step, like we have done before, is to balance the number of oxygens using uh, waters. Right now we have four oxygen atoms on our product side, therefore we're going to need four waters to be on our reactant side. Our next step is to balance hydrogens. Right now we have four pairs of two, so that's eight hydrogens. So then on the product side we're going to need to add H, eight H pluses. 
And our last step is to uh, add hydroxides because we're told this reaction happens in a base. Now, we, in our last step, we added eight hydrogens to the product side. In order to neutralize that, we need to need eight hydroxides as well. However, when we add eight hydroxides to the product side to keep everything in balance, we need to add eight hydroxides to our reactant side. Next, we combine hyd hydrogen with hydroxide to create water. We have eight hydrogens and eight hydroxides. We're going to get eight waters. However, we note that on our left-hand side, we had four waters to start with. Four waters on the left, we have eight waters on the right. We can actually cancel it out. So instead of writing eight waters on the right, we can now just write four waters on the right. And the number of water on our left-hand side is totally canceled out. So then our final equation is that we have eight hydroxides plus four Cl2 yields one perchlorate, seven chlorides, and four waters. Lastly, we check the number of charges on the left and the right to see if they're balanced. Here we have eight sets of negative one to be uh, negative eight. On the product side, we have one set of negative one here and seven negative one to be a sum of negative eight. So yes, indeed, the number of charges on the left and the right do balance out.